Greetings, greetings, Bob and viewers. Hello. We're going to show you a therapy trick that's going to help you relax that deep and sometimes stubborn psoas muscle. I actually agree with you, Brad. It is, yeah, yeah. It's wonderful. We've got 9.3 seconds. We'll get right back at it. Sam's here to help. Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. All right, Bob, before we get started, a little precursor. We need to talk about the pronunciation of, of the psoas. psoas muscle. Now, I have heard a professional Other, right. pronounce it as psoas. <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating. We will have none of that kind of pronunciation We're on the show. We're a family show. It is a family show. Delete that. We will not say that. Okay, also people say psoas. Really? Because there's a P at the beginning. Oh, P my S gosh. Yeah, we'll, we'll have none of that. Uh, that's mostly on cartoons, but anyways. So we'll just simply call it the psoas, psoas. muscle. And the psoas muscle, as Sam is so... Demonstrated. Do you hear Yeah, him? see, he volunteered today. Don't watch out for the shoulder. He's got impingement yeah. up there. Uh, so we've got the psoas muscle is actually a hip flexor. It makes the hip or the femur bend up this direction. And it's interesting because it actually connects... To, to the, the lumbar back. spine. Right. Yep, the transverse processes, and it goes down. It connects to the lesser trochanter of the hip, and it allows this movement when it flexes. It's not doing that all by itself. There are some other muscles, the ilium, and uh, we won't get into the details. But if this muscle gets tight, it can cause back problem and back pain. Okay? Another thing that can happen when this muscle gets tight, there's something called reciprocal inhibition the opposite muscle, or the... Gluteus maximus. Right, the uh, antagonist. Right. Which is the gluteus maximus. That muscle can actually... Shut down. Shut down, and it's called... Right. Uh, what is it called again, Bob? Um. <laughs> Gluteal... Amnesia. Amnesia. I almost forgot myself. So that actually, and that's just a term. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this whole concept to make the psoas work for us and loosen up. So hold on. I find this funny. We couldn't remember gluteal <laughs> amnesia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's all part of the. All right. So what we want is reciprocal inhibition to help relax the psoas muscle. So we're going to contract the gluteus maximus. And the way to do that, Bob's already in position. It's simply a hook line like this. He's going to bridge. And right now, he's contracting those glute max. So stretching the hip flexor. At the same time, yeah. Right. Exactly. So we're going to work that 10 repetitions. If you feel like that's getting too easy and you want to actually uh, get more firing of the glute max, you can go on one leg. So now he's going to work the right side only, and he's going to work it like that. You can take this hand and actually grab your glute maximus and, and feel, feel it. Feel it contract. You get some biofeedback that L way. A little strange. Yeah, well, but just don't do it, people yeah. around in the gym. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but you can do it. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Spank <laughs> so. Why, Bob? Why? It's a family show. We're going to get All right, the we FDC can, yeah. or whatever is going right. to get after us. All we, right. And we can add weight. Right? Yes. Yep. So you can put anything. You If you have a plate uh, that you use for your dumbbells or your barbell, or you can have some... Uh, dumbbells here like Bob's demonstrating. You could have one of your children sit on your waist if they're two or three years old. There you go. That, a little more difficult. Yeah, it makes a difference. You bet. Okay, good. Now we're going to show you another <laughs> option that I actually think works better for this when you get to the point of being active. So hold on. Okay, Bob, option number two to get that reciprocal inhibition and to stretch that psoas is you're going to need either a loop band, a large loop band, or you can take a regular uh, tubular band and hook them together like this so you essentially sure. make a loop band. You do need an anchor point. You can use a staircase, a handrail, a bed, a bed whatever. Post. Uh, eight wall anchors, which we use because they work Someone so handy. Someone you trust. Someone you trust, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we used to do that yeah. years ago. Right. Yeah, that trust yeah. part was another big deal there. So anchor it one way or another. It's best if you're not to the floor, but anywhere in this area. You put it around your waist, and now we're going to contract. Oh, there we are. We're going to contract those glute muscles as we do a hip thrust. 
Squeeze those butt muscles together as tight as you can. That's going to make the psoas muscles relax and stretch back at the same time. You can put your hands on those glutes and feel and them contract. Sure firing. Yep. That biofeedback is really important. Now, you can do that. I would do 10 to 20 of those. Relax. Maybe do another set. Okay, now there's another, especially if you're a runner or when you walk, right. you're having some hamstrings. Uh, problems. This is really functional, As, Brad. It is. So when you walk or when you run, obviously one leg goes forward. So this muscle, the right glute, is going to be working, hopefully. And what right. we're going to do is with this leg, non-weight bearing, I'm using the stick to balance. Grab whatever you need to balance unless you don't, unless you have really good balance. Put your hand on your buttocks and go forward and feel that glute tighten up. We're stretching the psoas at this point while right. this is maximally contracting. And do 10 of those, and we're going to get that psoas to automatically release because that's the way our body's wired. And how has this worked for your hamstring, Brad? Right. We're talking about psoas, but the hamstrings is directly correlated right. with this as well. So it's been wonderful. For some people, they're overactive. Yeah. The hamstring. So this gets a gluten play. I got another video that actually refers You're gonna to that. You're going to do that? Yeah, we're sure. going to do that next, actually. Oh, okay. All right. Now, after you've done either the, the bridging, the double leg stance, hip thrust, or the single leg, then we're going to go directly after the psoas and really get after it now that it's relaxed, ready to go. Hold on. All right. And now to finally get after that psoas even more aggressively, we're going to do it kneeling. So we're working the left psoas only. And my good posture. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead, bend forward. But while I do so, I can actually fire the glute. Yes. So tighten it and up. You feel it again. You, you feel that glute fire right. with maximal contraction. Yep. And you're getting, you can actually stretch the flexor more aggressively this way. Right, exactly. Right. You may not want to do this. Maybe you had enough stretch the other way. Right. But it's, uh, this is definitely the one that's more aggressive. Make sure you do both sides. Even if one side's tight, I recommend doing the other side just for maintenance. Maybe not as aggressive. And you can get buns of steel. Buns of steel. Yeah, it's a win-win situation. Right. The psoas is loose. The buttocks is, is tight. tight. <laughs> you can crack an egg on it. <laughs> Yeah, we digress. Anyways, right. good luck with your so so as not so as so as yeah so as very very correct. Thank you so much.